today we're taking another look at a new airbrush brand that has been gaining in popularity over the last few months. The brand is called Gallery and this model is the GHAC 98. The 98 is designed to be a premium airbrush and it has some very unique features that I haven't seen from any other brand. In the hand it definitely feels like a premium airbrush, it doesn't feel cheap at all, it feels solidly built. The first unique feature is the removable cup which is polished to a mirror finish. To be honest, at first I kind of thought that this was a gimmick. I didn't think that a polished cup would add that much to an airbrush. But it turned out that I was wrong. I actually really love this. You just put a drop or two of paint in, it slides right down to the bottom. Nothing sticks to the edge of the cup. And it makes cleaning it and keeping it looking brand new so, so easy to do. So this feature definitely caught me by surprise. Turned out that I really enjoyed using it while painting. And this is a pretty large cup. It holds a quarter of an ounce of paint, which is about 7 milliliters. When you buy the GHAC 98, it comes equipped with a 0.38 millimeter needle and nozzle. And a nozzle size like this is definitely the sweet spot. It's perfect for general use airbrushing. You could paint extreme detail like hairlines, and also, it's going to be a bit more forgiving with thicker paint than a detail airbrush. The rear handle has the standard extra features. There's a cutout if you want to use this to quickly flush out any clogs in the brush. And also, on the back, you have a screw that acts as a needle limiter, which Gallery calls their preset fluid control knob. These are very simple to use. If you screw this down to a certain point, it's going to limit how far back you can pull the trigger. If I screw it down all the way like I'm doing here, I can't pull back on the trigger, so it's going to spray a very small amount of paint. And then if I open it up, I have full trigger control. So this feature can be useful if you're just starting out and you're scared that you may spray too much paint. I bought this model back in April, and I paid around 88 US dollars for it. When I bought this one, I also picked up their GHAD39, which I reviewed before on this channel a few months back. And when I got these, there was some combo deal going on on Amazon for both of them for around 130 US dollars. So I thought that was a great deal. The airbrush comes packaged and shipped in this very nice box, and inside it's very straightforward. You get a few Teflon or PTFE O-rings. These are placed on the back of the nozzle to create a seal with the airbrush. You also get some documentation, and it's just the airbrush along with a cup and some lubrication, which you could use to lube the needle. One thing I want to show here, which has nothing to do with the airbrush itself, is this very nice diagram that they included on the back of the box. Breaking down and cleaning an airbrush is just part of painting with one. You're going to have to do it eventually. So what I thought was cool about this box is that you could store your parts in here as you disassemble the airbrush. And then when you reassemble it, you could just follow the diagram here, put everything back in place. It's a very simple concept, but I love it. I think it makes it so much easier for new painters. And speaking of disassembly, let's break down this airbrush so that you can see all the internal parts. The first thing that I'm removing here is the cup and the needle cap. I'll also remove this rear handle and loosen up the needle chucking nut so that I can remove the needle. And the top of the box here is a great place to store all the parts. That way you can see a diagram of where they need to go when you reassemble it. This part right here is called the spring case. And depending on how far you screw it in, meaning how tight or how loose it is, it's going to adjust the spring tension on the trigger. I know that if you're new to airbrushing, it may feel more comfortable if you keep it loose, but like always, I recommend tightening this down pretty far because that's going to give you a better seal with the needle tip and the nozzle and just give you better control. If you fully unscrew the spring case, you're able to remove it as well as the spring and the needle chucking guide. A few months ago, I reviewed their cheaper airbrush, which was the Gallery GHAD39, and I could be wrong, but to me, these look like the exact same parts. The build quality is exactly the same. They seem to be pretty well built, and it's very simple to break down and reassemble. And another part that seems to be exactly the same from the 39 is the lever guide inside the body of the airbrush. Unfortunately, this part is separate. It's not connected to the needle spring guide, which makes it a real pain to reinstall. Now, I've been told by a few people on here that they actually prefer this because it makes the trigger feel more responsive and more comfortable. So I presume that this was intentionally done for that purpose. But to me, I don't notice any difference in smoothness. All my Awadas have this lever connected to the spring guide, which just makes reassembly so much easier. The trigger itself seems pretty nicely built. If you ever used an Iwata Eclipse, this one is very similar, if not identical. 
It has that small piston at the bottom of it, which has a lever on it. You have to insert that down into the valve assembly. To remove the nozzle, I'll be using a pair of soft jaw pliers. I always recommend picking up a pair of these. They're not needed. You could do this by hand, but sometimes over time, parts get a little stuck with paint and some reducer. So it's a good idea to have these so you never scratch your airbrush. Once the nozzle cap is removed, you're able to remove the floating nozzle itself. And you can see from this right here that the nozzle just gets placed right on top of this interior brass ring and that'll hold it in place once the nozzle cap is screwed on. Now this nozzle design is brand new and it's very unique in airbrushing. It's actually the main reason I found myself interested in this brand. What I thought was so interesting is that there's eight channels along the outside of it. Gallery calls this their micro air channel design and the purpose of it is to evenly direct the airflow right over the nozzle tip. This is supposed to help spraying the paint to atomize it to very, very fine droplets. And we'll see later in the painting test that it did a phenomenal job at paint atomization. There's a Teflon washer inside the body of the airbrush here, and this should help give a good seal between the cup and the body of the airbrush. Inside the body, you have the needle packing screw, and I have a whole video showing how to adjust that if needed. At the bottom of the airbrush, you have the air valve assembly, which I never recommend disassembling. The 98 also includes one of these universal quick adapters, which is great. You don't need to buy it separately. So if you're like me and you use a quick adapter system on your air hose, you could just plug this right in. So I'll speed through the reassembly because it's the exact same thing, but in reverse. So I personally think that this airbrush has a very nice build quality to it. The only thing that I'm not crazy about is that separate trigger lever which is always a challenge to get back in. Older Iwata airbrushes and Badger airbrushes have that same design. It's something that you'll get used to the more you do it. So before we move along to the painting test, I just want to compare it to the other gallery airbrush, the GHAD39 that I bought along with this one. So the one in the box right now is the cheaper model, which is the GHAD39. And this one goes for around half price, around 40 to 45 US dollars. In the box, you get a lot more things. You get two cups instead of one, and you also get two extra needles and nozzles. When you pick up the cups, you'll notice right away that the major difference is the more expensive one has that mirror polish to it. And like I said before, I really like this feature. I think the high polish is awesome. It makes the cup incredibly easy to clean. But besides that mirror polish in the cup, I'm not seeing that much of a difference between these two airbrushes. The only difference that I'm able to see besides the paint cup is that the rear handles are different. And again, I paid around $40 for one airbrush and then $90 for the other. The build quality on both is excellent. They're very nicely made, but I just don't understand the price difference. And now I don't want to just tell you that the two bodies and internals are identical. I decided to break them both down here on camera so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the internal parts for both. The cheaper one is on top and the more expensive one is on the bottom. These parts are clearly exactly the same. And that's completely fine. You'll see this on most brands, Iwata, Badger, most of their internals are the same. So I was thinking that there must be something different with the body and no, the bodies are exactly the same on both. The only thing that I noticed is that the more expensive one, the 98 seems to have better quality control. The chrome finish on it is absolutely flawless. It has zero imperfections on it. Where the cheaper one has some scratches and some imperfections, which I showed in its original review. I noticed this as soon as I bought the airbrushes months ago, so back then I reached out to Gallery to ask them what the difference was, and they pointed out that the 98, which is the more expensive one, has a more complex processing to the cup and obviously a better finish, which we can clearly see. They also mentioned that the 98 has a different needle, it's made out of a unique innovative material, that's their words, um, that can automatically recover after bending. They also said, and I quote, that the internal structure of the GHAC98 is more complex, featuring a dual 8 micro air channel system. So I decided to take out the microscope to see what these two looked like underneath it to see if we could spot any differences. The 39, which is the cheaper one, is on the left, and the 98 is the more expensive one on the right. There is definitely some difference in the manufacturing. The quality looks the same, but the more expensive one, the 98 on the right, seems to definitely have the dual channels like they were talking about in between each slot. And clearly I'm no airbrush designer or engineer, so I'm not quite sure how this makes it better or more expensive, but I assume that it adds more to the manufacturing process. The needles are clearly different. The 98 has a much higher polish and a nicer finish to it. And it also has a much more narrow acute taper at the end. So if you bought both airbrushes like I did and you want to know what the major difference is, this seems to be it. The nozzle, needle, and quality control. 
but externally, besides the cup, they're pretty much the exact same airbrush with the 98 having some better quality control. In the next few weeks on this channel, we're going to be painting some different landscapes, so I wanted to start first with a very simple sky, just to show new painters the basics. I painted this easy sky painting a few weeks ago, and I decided to use the 98 here to see how well it performed. I'm spraying the airbrush at 25 PSI, and this color that I have in it right now is a mixture of blue and white by Createx Illustration Colors. I didn't reduce this paint that much, so it's definitely on the thicker side with that opaque white mixed in. And what I'm doing here is painting a gradient, a dark value on top to a lighter value at the bottom. And because this color is semi-opaque, the way I get it darker is just by spraying more. So I spray some more paint on the top and less on the bottom. And the 98 did an outstanding job at atomizing this paint. It went on incredibly smooth and the gradient is flawless. There was no spitting or inconsistencies with the spray pattern. Very happy with the way it performed. So to lighten up the lower part of that gradient, I'm using pure white reduced about 10-15% with distilled water. And I'll be spraying this along the bottom. If you painted with an airbrush before, you'll know that white, which has titanium dioxide in it, which is one of the thicker pigments, is undoubtedly one of the most difficult colors to spray. And I had zero problems with the white. It did an excellent job at atomizing and spraying that paint. While I was painting this, I really appreciated that smooth cup. I know I mentioned this earlier on in the video, but it was just so easy to switch between colors and then to clean the brush at the end. On every airbrush while you're painting, paint tends to collect and build up on the inside of the cup. And I noticed on this one that the paint buildup was much less than other airbrushes. That cup is just so smooth that the paint has nothing to grab onto, so it all just kind of gets funneled down right into the body of the airbrush. And then later on in this one, as I was painting in some of the clouds, I really liked the way that it sprayed. I got plenty of detail. You can see here that I'm not holding it that close to the canvas itself, and I'm still getting a great amount of detail, but it's giving me those softer edges, which is very important when you're painting clouds. And again, this is opaque white paint that I'm spraying here, something that I never like to spray in a detail airbrush. So it was nice to use the 98, which had a larger needle and nozzle size at 0.38, just made it a lot easier to get that paint flowing through the nozzle. So when you're painting a sky scene like this, the key is to get everything to look very soft, kind of having that smoky look to it. And I could not be happier with the way that the 98 performed here. It did exactly what I wanted it to, so very pleased. Just like every other review, I checked the airspeed here and I got a reading right around five meters per second. That's exactly what I expected from this type of brush. It's also the same number I got from the GHAD39. And what I'm doing here is like all my other reviews, I'm checking the trigger response rate. This is very important to see how far back you have to pull on the trigger in order to get paint. I would say that this airbrush, the 98, is very good. It feels like a step up from their other airbrush, the 39. But with that said, I'm not feeling that it's an instant response like what you get with Iwata airbrushes and with Badgers. I'm very picky with the trigger response. I always want it to be instant, but that's just my preference. That's what I prefer. I would say that this one is still very good. Moving along to the line consistency test, this airbrush is phenomenal. Perfect thin line the whole way through, no skips, no splatters, very well done. And then finally, using some soapy water to test the nozzle for any air leaks. There's no bubbles here, that means that it's forming a very good seal. I saw that they added an O-ring to it, which always helps. So great to see again. So that's it. That's my review of the GHAC98. It's a very nice airbrush and it definitely has that premium feel to it. I see that on Amazon right now. It's going for around 85 US dollars. Excellent price for this type of airbrush. So that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back here next week.